We're talking about the Switch today. In this video, I'm breaking down Ipswich and the best and worst suburbs, in my opinion, for buying an investment property. Now, of course, this is just my opinion. I'm a buyer's agent here in the Brisbane market. I have my own property portfolio. But always take this with a grain of salt, do your own research based on the quantitative and the qualitative data, and draw your own conclusions when it comes to buying a property. The first thing we need to do is actually work out how big Ipswich is. So we're gonna dive into a map and look at the border of Ipswich City Council, and then jump into the suburbs where I think there might be value, some locations that look a bit iffy and there's a lot of land supply, and everything in between. So let's dive into the map. You can see on screen here that we've got a broad outline of Ipswich City Council. If I zoom right out, you can see it almost looks like a little Australia here surrounding Brisbane. So Ipswich is a large council just west of Brisbane CBD. There's a lot of open land supply to the west of Ipswich, but the core of Ipswich, Ipswiches, <laughs> a, that's a mouthful, but the core of Ipswich's established suburbs are more towards the eastern side of the city council. Because it's a bit easier to see, I've switched over to Google Maps. So you can see here we've got the heart of Ipswich. This is where the original Queenslanders are built and a lot of the old homes are in the center of Ipswich. And the border between Brisbane City Council and Ipswich runs around these main arterial roads. You can see Red Bank, Goodna, Carroll Park, Kamira, Bellbird, Springfield. These are suburbs all located within Ipswich City Council. And then outside of there, you've got Richlands, Forest Lake. These sit in the neighboring council of Brisbane City. So let's start off with the most eastern suburbs. So just the ones we were talking about, Collingwood Park, Goodna, Red Bank, Carroll Park, Kamira. You can see here that these are quite sparse suburbs. There's actually one little set of local shops here in Collingwood Park and a large amount of urban area that's been built out. These are very affordable pockets for investments and owner occupiers at this point in time. You can still buy a property in these areas between say 450 to $650,000. There's still a lot of potential in these pockets for land to be subdivided close by in neighboring suburbs, but you can see that the pocket here, including Collingwood Park and Bellbird Park and Red Bank Plains, has been built out over a period of time. They're about 20 to 30 years old in most cases, and you will be able to pick up a home around that, say, $550 to $600,000. The thing for me is these areas don't naturally have a lot of owner occupier appeal and demand. They're a long way from the Brisbane CBD, they're not necessarily close to Ipswich and the jobs there, and they don't really have the amenities and infrastructure that other pockets in Brisbane, in Logan, even in the center of Ipswich have. You might be able to find a great cash flow property in these locations. For example, you could pick up a property for say 550,000 that will rent for close to 500 or 550 a week. As we move a little bit further south, we move into the new Mastertown plan, which is Springfield and Greater Springfield. This includes Augustine Heights, Brookwater, Springfield, uh, Springfield Lakes, Central, Spring Mountain. Over the last few years, Springfield Land Corporation has continued to cut land across Greater Springfield, in particular across Spring Mountain. This layered view gives you a great idea of how Spring Springfield is progressing. You can see that Springfield Lakes is the most established pocket. This has all been built out just south of the main Centenary Highway. At the center, we've got the Orion Lagoon, we've got Bunnings, we've got the main shopping center, uh, the Central Station, and the football fields where the Brisbane Lions train. Further north to that, again, you've got more established suburbs in Augustine Heights, Brookwater around the golf course, and Springfield. And you can see pockets in here just opposite Brookwater, which are still being subdivided. The main subdivisions are occurring around the Springfield Central area and in Spring Mountain. And this is a great view. You can see that none of these properties have been built out yet, and there's a lot of land supply coming to the market. They're still doing the civil works here, adding the sewerage, adding the roads and the infrastructure. And same a little bit further south, higher up on the mountain where, these cutting, where they're cutting these lots on the backside. So based on all of this, Springfield has a great plan. They do have some appeal for own occupiers, but the problems for me are they're building on very small lots. So you typically buy a property on 300 to 450 square meters. And yes, there are million dollar homes in this area and a lot of owner occupiers, but in terms of making an investment, there's a lot more opportunities out there where you can buy 600 square meters. You can buy close to transport infrastructure, jobs and schools with owner occupier appeal, not at the Springfield price point. So I think there's there's too much compromise, there's too much land supply in this location, so I wouldn't be putting my money into Springfield at this point in time. Now let's move back to a bit more exciting stuff where we're talking about the center of Ipswich. Looking at the center of Ipswich here, this is where I see the best opportunity if you're looking to buy an investment property in the Ipswich market. 
Newtown, Coal Falls, Leichhardt, Eastern Heights. These are the pockets where I'll be putting my money if I was going to buy in the Ipswich market today. These locations have been built up for many years. They're around the train network. They're around the schools and state universities. And so for me, if you can buy an established home that has some character or is fairly modern and will appeal to a broad market, that's where I see value buying in Ipswich City Council. Now you need to be aware of the main arterial roads and the noise profiles of these main roads and train networks. So you wouldn't want to be, for example, in between Taco Bell and the train line. Although some people might love that. But for me, you're looking for those quiet, family-friendly streets which have at least walking distance to this infrastructure or are close by to the hospitals, the schools, and the train lines. You're looking for something with a twist, so a property that's a little bit unique, whether that's from a character point of view or it's a more modern home that has appeal to owner-occupiers. And so that's where I would be putting my money, in the heart of Ipswich, within, say, three to five kilometers from the CBD. You can also check out the KFC. I've mentioned that in previous videos. KFC is great out at Ipswich, so head there as well, which is in the heart of town. Now to round this video out, let's have a chat about the remaining suburbs I would be avoiding to put my money at this point in time. This includes areas like Yamanto, Flinders View, Ripley, South Ripley. These are brand new house and land estates. And anything basically west of the center of Ipswich. All this land supply out here, Amberley, Walloon, Rosewood, Mount Forbes, it just keeps going. As you can see here on screen, Ipswich is absolutely massive, and so there's a lot of land supply to the west, which could be built out over time. You also need to be aware of the RAF uh, airway, so the Amberley base, so you also don't want to have issues with that noise profile. Again, I think switching to the satellite view is really telling. As you can see on screen, these areas in Ripley are continuing to be subdivided, and that's good for owner occupiers who want supply on the market and people who want to buy their first home. But when it comes to an investment opportunity, buying in these new build suburbs where there's a lot of land being built out over time, yes, there's new infrastructure going there, but there's more supply which is going to be soaked up and not necessarily create pressure on property prices. At the end of the day, property is a game of supply and demand. And with more supply in these areas, and that's soaking up the demand, locations like Ripley don't really make sense to me as an investment opportunity. I feel like Ipswich gets a bit of a bad rap, which is a little bit unwarranted. It's an established area with some great locations close to its CBD, and it is its own central location. It is very separate from Brisbane. It has its own infrastructure. It has its own jobs. It's fairly far west from the coastline, so that you've got to be aware of that land supply issue. But all in all, there are some great investment opportunities, whether you're looking for cash flow or whether you're looking for that long-term capital growth by buying in those established pockets. For me, you clearly need to avoid those new house and land estate areas around Umanto, Ripley, South Ripley. Those pockets for me don't look like good value buying, but you could go for cash flow towards the eastern side of Ipswich, or if you're looking to buy into the center of town, pick up a property that has a twist and has some unique character. If you love KFC, then make sure you drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel down below. If you're looking for a Brisbane-based buyer's agent, head over to purposeproperty.com.au to book in a free strategy session with myself. Otherwise, click this video over here for more things real estate, renovating, and financial freedom. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.